They say a retired criminal, but is that really so? Is it only seen in movies, or does it exist in the real world as well? Can a man get out of their criminal world just like that, without any consequences? Some say he still rules that world. A brilliant mind, enormous courage, and an innocent face are just some of the ways to succeed in this. And this man combined it all. He started everything from scratch, wanting to get out of his life and become something much bigger. He had no idea what all this world would turn into. He had no idea what he would turn into. This is the untold story of Jerry the Monk Hutch. At first, he looks like an average pensioner but looks can be deceiving. He is anything but that. Many at his age resort to a quiet life surrounded by family and friends, where they spend their days relaxing somewhere in nature. But everyone has their own way of satisfying themselves. Someone's pleasure is bloody. Unremarkable young offender from Dublin's desolate north inner city, Jerry Hutch had a talent for eluding the authorities while secretly creating one of Ireland's most powerful criminal organisations. Though he was gaining a reputation for violence, the monk, as he would eventually be called, was not on any most wanted lists. Everyone at Garda headquarters, with one exception, had no idea what he looked like. Hutch, a young criminal who robbed stores by leaping over the counter to take money from the till, was moving up in the criminal hierarchy. His crew was accused of stealing 1.7 million Irish pounds after robbing a Merino Mart security truck in 1987. It was only the start. He would establish himself as a disciplined and deadly criminal in the epicenter of the Irish underground. Despite not having been found guilty for any of them, Hutch and his crew would go on to commit some of the largest heists in the state's history. Many of them were run in cooperation with the Provisional IRA, or Irish Republican Army. The mercenary character of the acts astounded Gardaí, while also shocking the people. Hutch and the Dublin squad of the Provisional IRA are suspected of stealing 2.1 million Irish pounds out of the AIB Cash Holding Centre in Lisdug and Waterford City in January 1992. The best part is that it is still unresolved. Gardi suspect Hutch was also responsible for the January 1995 robbery on the Brinks Allied headquarters in Clonshock, Dublin. This job earned 2.8 million Irish pounds for them. The Hutch organization, or members of it, are also suspected of taking 7.6 million euros out of the Bank of Ireland on College Green in 2009. It's the state's largest single crime in history. According to Brian Sherry, a veteran police inspector who examined the Brinks Allied heist, the criminal organisation members were never punished because there was no evidence. Understanding Hutch, his colleagues and their common past is essential to understanding his success and the endurance of his criminal organisation. Hutch is in his 60s now. He grew up on Lower Buckingham Street in Dublin's north inner city, a downtrodden socially impoverished neighbourhood plagued by the societal problems of drug addiction, unemployment, and low education. Patrick and Julia, his parents, were solidly working class. He didn't socialize much and preferred to stay inside the bounds of his neighborhood. In March 1987, he married Patricia Fowler, a girl from the neighborhood. The couple had five children, all of whom attended private schools. The North Inner City's geographical position a socially poor concrete jungle situated between Dublin's city centre and more rich suburbs like Clontarf was a fertile ground for community activity, militant republicanism and opportunistic crime. In the 1980s and 1990s, the neighbourhood was among the first to be destroyed by heroin, resulting in a lost generation and hostility towards Gardaí. People growing up in the north inner city had poor prospects at the time, Gardaí could not be trusted, 
Locals resorted to organizing concerned parents' organizations, which were sponsored by the provisional IRA, and harassed and murdered heroin traffickers or burned down their homes. Hutch and his gang rose from the shadows to become one of the most powerful, long-lasting criminal organizations that ever emerged from the Irish underground. The gang itself is one of a kind in modern Ireland. It appears to be a remnant from the past. Street-based gangs are usually made up of people from the same family, people who are located in close proximity to each other, or people who have personal relationships established on trust. Most gangs disband after their members are caught and imprisoned. They have a hierarchical structure, which makes it easier for law enforcement to dismantle them. Hutch's criminal organization is unique. It's patriarchal, tribal in character, and composed primarily of people from Dublin's north inner city who are linked by blood, marriage, or kinship. It is currently a close-knit group that is distrustful of outsiders. However, its members do work independently and in collaboration with other criminal organizations. Garda Intelligence claims that its feud with the Kinahan cartel has strengthened it. Hutch has portrayed the honest criminal, a provider for his family who became involved with crime out of need and financial despair. Those who know him claim he would argue that honest guys always lose. It's difficult to overstate Hutch and his gang's influence and strength in Dublin's north inner city. When he was accused of David Byrne's murder at the Regency Hotel, social media campaigns were launched in his defence, with some gaining thousands of supporters. In jail, supporters from the general population sent him birthday cards. Few people will talk badly of him. Some people compare him to Robin Hood. Many of his partners have been brutally killed. Mel Cox, who was murdered in Blanchard's town following the Marino Mart heist, was among them. Another partner was Patrick Shanahan, who was assassinated in October 1994. Both murders remain unsolved. Others have vanished. The attack on the Regency Hotel and the inquiry into it shocked Garda headquarters, the Justice Department, and the people out of their complacency. The criminal investigation revealed that the gang had quietly grown its influence infiltrated the Gardaí and was now responsible for a massive amount of crime. It had acquired tens of millions of euros through drug trading, contraband smuggling and fraud. The law enforcement agencies believe Hutch is now wealthier than he has ever been, which raises unpleasant concerns for Garda headquarters. The inability of Garda intelligence to identify the assault plot or even deploy officers to watch the event is today regarded as one of the biggest intelligence failures in the force's history. Hutch's legacy may eventually be the establishment of a mafia-like criminal network bearing his family name. It will most certainly survive and potentially grow even after he's gone. The 60-year-old went on trial for the murder of David Byrne, who was shot six times at a packed boxing weigh-in event at the Regency Hotel in Dublin. Hutch, known as the Monk, was declared not guilty after a 52-day trial in Ireland's non-jury special criminal court, throughout which he did not testify. Ms Justice Tara Burns stated during the court's decision that there was a reasonable possibility that the Regency shooting was organised by his brother Patsy Hutch, and that Jerry Hutch had stepped in as the family's leader. Everyone wants that luxurious criminal life, but not everyone can afford it. In the end, a high price is paid for it, so some decide it's not worth it, while others decide to play this game until retirement, regardless of the consequences. But does the same fate await all people in that world, or do some manage to escape? There are different opinions about that. If you like this video and want more content like this, Hit that like and subscribe button. Leave us a comment on what you think about this criminal. Thank you for watching.